The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. No, America. You are not the land of the free, home of the brave. You are not the greatest nation on earth. You are not the superpower you proclaim. You are not the beacon of freedom, equality and liberty to all. You are not the promised land. You are not the democracy of the First Amendment where there is freedom of speech, of religion, of freedom to petition and assemble. Your president is not the leader of the free world. You do not have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Thus, what will history record of whom and what you are? What you are in essence and action is a nation of ignorant cowards, slaves to be exact, to the very nation you created and continue to pay for your tax dollars, weapons, and the lives of your sons and daughters, Israel. What you are is a nation of fools, according to Israel, detached from reality, delusional, and full of illusions. In other words, a nation of mental defects who are unaware of who's the real boss of this nation and your supposedly elected government. It's Israel, stupid. But your arrogance and conceit of greatness, of a democracy, of a representative government, a nation where the people freely choose their president and congressional representatives, a nation of American exceptionalism, blinds you to the reality that you neither control, own, nor create your own destiny. Who does? It's the little nation from afar, Israel. No candidate or politician can ever hope to be elected without the obligatory visit to Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial in Israel, while being forced to wear that mind-numbing yarmulke and the obligatory pandering and shameful visit and speech to the true altar of your government, APAC. They've been Washington's real power and policy makers for decades. This is what Secretary of State John Foster Dulles in February 1957 quoted on page 99 of Fallen Pillars by Donald Neff. I am aware how almost impossible it is in this country to carry out a foreign policy in the Middle East not approved by the Jews. Terrific control the Jews have over the news media and the barrage the Jews have built up on congressmen. I am very much concerned over the fact that the Jewish influence here is completely dominating the scene and making it almost impossible to get Congress to do anything they don't approve of. The Israeli embassy is practically dictating to the Congress through influential Jewish people in the country. That was said as early as 1957. You think you have freedom of speech? Then why are you and your government so cowardly, intimidated and silent to even mention Israel, Jews or Judaism in political or personal debates or conversations? Your knees tremble when these issues come up and you lose your vocal cords while your heart rate and blood pressure rise and your visit to the restroom becomes imperative. You think you have freedom of the press? You know the press that's owned, controlled and run by the Jews. Why is there not one single American Jew, Christian, Muslim or person of any faith on television criticizing Israel? Why? They will lose their jobs a la Helen Thomas 
Rick Sanchez, Octavia Nasser, and many, many others. Not to mention the many politicians who lost their jobs for daring to speak out against Israel. Try to submit an op-ed to the major papers critical of our government's Israeli-formulated foreign policy in the Middle East. Do you wonder why Islam and Sharia law, two unknown subjects to Americans, have become the hysteria de jour and who's behind it? It's to distract your short attention span away from the control, theft of money, weapons, spying, and wars you pay and die for Israel's security. Who do you think wants to push Muslims and Christians into a World War III? Do you honestly think that your government represents you? Once they arrive in Congress, your representatives are immediately welcomed by an army of APAC minions to brainwash them and let them know not to ever cross Israel and always vote for anything APAC sends. Most of the legislative staff in Congress are Jewish. Do you ever wonder why our Congress cuts meals to our children while sending billions to Israel with overwhelming bipartisan support? Look up the Congressional Votes and Resolution supportive of Israel. It's nothing short of a shocking embarrassment. Do you think you have freedom of religion? Who do you think is behind the push that you, yes, you Christians can't celebrate Christmas? Not even mentioning it by name, instead having to use holiday. Who's against school prayers? No displays of the nativity scene, no courses on world religions, and no school prayers. It's not the Muslims. Many Israeli TV shows mock and use blasphemous remarks against Jesus and the Virgin Mary, yet not one single Christian church, seminary, university, media outlet, organization or person has ever gone on TV or wrote an op-ed to a paper condemning our close ally for this filth. Imagine if this was on Iranian TV. בגלל זה אני אצלוב אותך. איך אתה מעז להטיף ליהודים התמימים? אלוהים! למה עזבתני? אתה נאצי ישו, אתה נאצי! From the Israeli Christian TV show, Tofi Vea Gorilla, a girl in bikini makes fun with a monkey of how Jesus Christ, a Nazi, was crucified and how all Christians are an evil people. Israeli TV show blasphemes Jesus and the Virgin Mary. How about monkey Christ? Okay, but how do we know God really loves us? Because his son died for our sins. Monkey Jesus could have ripped off the Romans' arms and masturbated all over their bodies, but he chose love instead. And I think that makes him pretty darn special. Cool. Thanks, Dad. How's our son doing? He's gonna be okay, Paula. He's gonna be okay. However, Islam views Jesus as the true Messiah, born through a miracle from the Virgin Mary and performed miracles during his life. How can Israeli Jews feel such supremacy and the freedom to blaspheme Jesus, the Virgin Mary, and all non-Jews? Here's the rabbinical explanation. Goyim were born only to serve us. Without that, they have no place in the world, only to serve the people of Israel. According to Rabbi Yosef, the lives of non-Jews in Israel are safeguarded by divinity to prevent losses to Jews. To wit, in Israel, death has no dominion over them. With Gentiles, it will be like any person. They need to die, but God will give them longevity. Why? Imagine that one's donkey would die. They'd lose their money. This is his servant, 
That's why he gets a long life, to work well for this Jew. Huh. Why are Gentiles needed? They will work. They will plow. They will reap. We will sit like an effendi and eat. That is why Gentiles were created. This from the Jerusalem Post, from Yosef. Gentiles exist only to serve Jews. October the 25th, 2010. Only Israel can slap America's presidents, Congress and the American people over and over and over while they all keep turning the other cheek over and over. What hold do these Zionists have on our government, our minds, souls, freedoms and courage to speak and act that we in this alleged superpower are so intimidated, so afraid, so cowardly to even raise a whisper in public about the historical cost to our lives, wealth, worldwide credibility, and our very humanity by a people we saved in Europe, a people whom we against all divine and human laws gifted a foreign land to, a nation that wouldn't exist without our recognition, support, and protection, a nation that commits genocide in our name and with our tax dollars. Supporting Israel means supporting genocides against innocent civilians, ethnic cleansing, an expansionist military policy that's based on stealing more land and expelling more people, destroying villages by the hundreds, demolishing tens of thousands of homes, imprisoning hundreds of thousands of people over decades without the rule of law, allowing torture as policy, shooting children in classrooms, stealing drinking and irrigating water for settler swimming pools, building illegal settlements on hilltops, allowing racist settlers free reign to kill, burn, beat and terrorize families, destroying electrical and water plants, hospitals, schools, churches, mosques, ambulances and littering lands with cluster bombs to kill and mutilate children. It means never holding Israel accountable for violating hundreds of UN resolutions due to our Yes, you America, vetoes. It means being subservient to a rogue, terrorist, racist, murderous state who we have elevated and put on a pedestal for our idolatrous worship. Here's the nation we support. It is the duty of the Israeli leadership to explain to the public a number of truths. One truth is that there is no Zionism, no settlement, and no Jewish state without evacuating Arabs and without expropriating lands and their fencing off. From Yesha Yahu Ben Porat, Yediot Achronot, on the 14th of the 7th, 1972. Such as our support for Israel against the hapless, long-suffering Palestinians who by the millions have lived for decades as refugees in squatter camps and squalor camps and impoverished lives because of Israel's founding, a founding America created. They are homeless and stateless, and America is too cowardly and fearful of Israel and organized jury to even cast a symbolic vote to support a Palestinian state for the stateless. Israel has made fools of us, our government, our religions, our beliefs, and everything Americans have come to value about themselves and their country. America, your new manifest destiny is to serve Israel and only Israel. So help you God. And so continues the illegal occupations of America and Palestine. Oh. <laughs>